Hello and welcome to Online Bible Study, whenever it is you are watching this, whether you are watching it live uh, at 4.15 or so on Thursday, 4.15 every Thursday. We just got done uh, with this Bible class, so I'm doing it online, doing it again tonight at 7 o'clock every Thursday. This is the new routine that I'd like to start, so seeing as it's a new routine and it's been a while since I did this online Bible study stuff, I'm a little rusty. But I'm really glad if you are watching this or listening to it, we'll also make an audio of it for um, our podcast. It'll be on our podcast, Emmanuel Cares podcast. We're going through the book of Second Thessalonians uh, for our Bible study. And why did I pick the book of Second Thessalonians? Well, I didn't really pick it. I solicited uh, your advice and said, what would you guys like to study? And I didn't get a clear answer or... That's the answer that I'm sticking to. But the reason why I'm doing Second Thessalonians, why this is a good book to do, read, is that we went through First Thessalonians uh, three years ago in our Bible class, and this kind of completes the series. So the nerd in me likes to finish things, or the organizer in me likes to finish things. So we're finishing Second Thessalonians. Also, it's a good book because it's writing to Christians who are discouraged. It seems like the world has... Uh, uh, has it out for them, and the Apostle Paul writes to them to encourage them and to give them um, instruction as to how to deal with some of the Christians that are in their midst because it isn't everything isn't rosy, everything isn't going hunky dory for the Thessalonians there, and so he is also telling them about that, and then also telling them about the man of lawlessness. So that would be the the uh, tantalizing uh, uh, fruit that we're hanging, that we're going to talk about the hanging in front of you is the, uh, we're going to talk about the man of lawlessness and otherwise known as the Antichrist. John refers to him as the Antichrist, but the Apostle Paul calls him second, the man of lawlessness. So we'll get into that uh, as we go forward. So if you're here, let me know that you're here. If you have any questions, you can ask uh, questions online. I, I was going to have a handout for you to fill out but uh, this time the handout is really is just the first two verses of the book of Second Thessalonians, and we're kind of getting our feet wet into uh, this. And uh, the final reason is I didn't quite get myself ready to go with that. So if you've got a pen and paper, take some notes, ask some questions, you can uh, uh, put that those questions in the chat, and I'll see them. So without further ado, let's keep going. Let's go into Second Thessalonians, but before we do that, let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here, whether we're live or on demand or whether we're listening. We ask that you would uh, be with me as I share God's word, that the word would uh, strengthen us and encourage us as Christians as we're living in this world. Uh, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So, <clears throat> Second Thessalonians, lesson one. This is a less. This is a Bible series put together by a different Wells pastor, Pastor Dan Ham Hobbin, and I am just uh, tweaking his materials, which I think is a good thing for pastors to do every once in a while. Uh, yes, we should be uh, working on the scriptures on, by ourselves, which is what I was doing going through the Second Thessalonians. But like the slides and things, the pictures, um, the organizational structure of these five lessons, I think it, he did a really good job. So why do I need to? Reinvent the real. So his theme for um, his theme for the book is the Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed, and it, our theme for today is grace and peace are yours. If you are going to write a letter to a Christian who is struggling, what would you say? Yeah, I know writing letters not a thing that people do. If you're going to write an email, I suppose. If you're going to write uh, write something down to somebody and encourage them, what would you what would you say? What would be your theme for that letter? Uh, and the Apostle Paul's theme is grace and peace are yours. He's going to finish. He's going to start the book of Second Thessalonians with this concept. He's going to finish the book, uh, and we'll dive into that as we get into this study together. The authors of this letter. As we can see in verse uh, verse 1. So we're using the EHV. You are free to use whatever version of the Bible you would like. Um, but that is the version that I am using. It's called EHV. Uh, we've got extra copies here at Emmanuel. If you 
want a copy to look at it. But here we go. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So who are the authors of this letter? Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Now when was this letter written? That's a good question because it really is based off of when was 1 Thessalonians written. And if you uh, went to our Bible class or watched it online or listened to it, you recognize that it's kind of in competition as to it's one of the earlier books that the Apostle Paul wrote. Perhaps he wrote this uh, during his second missionary journey, um, but exactly when, 52, maybe a little bit late, earlier, later. But then the second book of Second Thessalonians was written about six months or so later, I guess. We're, we're taking a, a guess at it. Because he's sitting there in Corinth writing this letter uh, to them, and in Corinth is Silas and Timothy. Now, what were Silas and Timothy doing there? Well, <clears throat> Silas and Timothy were accompanying Paul on his second missionary journey. As you recall, after the first missionary journey, John and Barnabas were, gonna, were commissioned, and Silas uh, were commissioned to, to go on a second missionary journey. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark along with him, John Mark, who is the author of the Gospel of Mark, and Paul did not, and they had a disagreement. John Mark uh, had was homesick on that first missionary journey, and Paul thought maybe, I guess, th that was maybe that disqualified him, or maybe Paul was concerned that he would be homesick again. Barnabas was giving him a second chance. Um, there was disagreement. It was It was... So divided that Barnabas and and John Mark went their own way, and Paul and Silas went theirs. So, Paul, Silas, Timothy are the authors of this letter. John, um, uh, Paul was probably the more pre predominant one that would the the principal author of this letter, as we find in chapter three, verse seventeen. To whom was this letter addressed? to the Christians living in Thessalonica. What do we know about Thessalonica? Here are some really good slides that um, Dan Hobbin put together. So here is Thessalonica today. Uh, Thessalonica today is the um, it's about five, 750,000 people, the second largest city in Greece. What else do we know about second uh, Thessalonica? What else do we know about Thessalonica? Again, getting the rust, shaking the rust off of me as I haven't done this all summer. It's known for something called the White Tower, which is when the uh, Byzantines and the Ottomans and and so on uh, were in charge of Thessalonica. The White Tower is like their tourist attraction, like their Eiffel Tower. This is their their. Uh, it's got some really sad history of of. Uh, executions being done and it was called the red tower for a while and then well that's not a very good pr you know you don't want to go see a, a tower where people died and their blood was used as paint on the outside so they painted it white and they called it the white tower so i guess it's one of those things where if you learn the history of something you recognize that uh not every not every uh landmark has such a positive history that we think it does well today they don't think about the old, the past. They just think about this is our tower. This is a symbol of that this modern city of Thessalonica once had an ancient past. Uh, Thessalonica had a, a forum that they were able to excavate some of it. And this is the, like a, a representation from a museum. And the forum is important because uh, when Paul, we'll read about this in Acts chapter 17, Paul's arrested and then brought be, before the forum and so we get an idea what that what that might have looked like today. Most of the things are either covered or destroyed because it's a modern city. So you don't get to you can't just uncover a modern city and say, well, uh, we we actually need to look at this stuff that's underneath here. And the people in that city are like, well, this is where we live. You can't just dig it all up because you want to see what things used to look like uh, two thousand years ago. Here's the picture of what they were able to uncover in that vessel. That's that forum in Thessalonica. Um, you can see the steps there. You can see the the arches, uh, the Roman arches, what's left of them. So 
that's pretty much our our tour of modern day Thessalonica. Uh, it is about 187 miles as the crow flies away from um, Athens, and Paul visits Thessalonica in Acts chapter 17, beginning at verse one. So let's go there and discover what happened. Yeah, that's Genesis, right? That's not the right book. X. Here we go. When Paul, Paul and Silas had traveled to Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went to the Jews, and on three Sabbath days he led them in a discussion from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead. He also said, This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great number of God-fearing Greeks and more than a few of the prominent women. But the Jews became jealous and gathered from the marketplace some wicked men who formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house and searched for Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the mob. When they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of his brothers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have stirred up trouble all over the world have come here too. And Jason was welcomed has welcomed them as guests. They were all acting contrary to Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, Jesus. The crowd and the city officials were stirred up when they heard these things. They took a security bond from Jason and the others and let them go. So the Apostle Paul is on his second missionary journey, heading to Thessalonica. Um, If you wanted a photo of the second missionary journey, he starts in Antioch um, and heads west and north. Uh, into what is modern-day Turkey, uh, finds his way up to Troas, then goes across the Aegean Sea to Neapolis and Philippi, where we get the book of Philippians from, and Amphipolis and Apollonia, which I mentioned before. Now he's in Thessalonica. While he is there, he is reasoning in the synagogue for three Sabbath days. Now, what's important about that? Just the, the content of what he was saying. You notice uh, he is pointing to them that the Christ, which is, that's a Greek word for the Old Testament word Messiah, and which means anointed one, the one in the Bible which God had said, this anointed one, this servant is going to suffer and die for the sins of the world. That's what Paul is talking about uh, to the, the Jews who knew their Old Testament And it was trying to encourage them that this Christ that is talked about in the Old Testament is Jesus, and Jesus suffered and died and rose again. Well, there were some that did not want uh, this to continue. Evidently, a lot of people were were believing in in the words of of the Apostle Paul, by led, of course, by the Holy Spirit who moves them to believe. And uh, so a great number of these enemies of, of the gospel take the Apostle Paul to court, in the, the the agora, the the marketplace, the court, uh, where all of the, the the happenings go on in the politi- political sphere, and they um, lied that G- that uh, the apostle Paul was talking about Jesus as if he were a, uh, a king, and this would th- therefore threaten uh, Caesar. So they made Jason, who was a synagogue leader, they made Jason. Uh, post bond, which is basically like our posting bond today, except they're saying we're going to give you money and, and and we're going to testify that the Apostle Paul will never come back here again. So Jason, the the leaders of the synagogue who were on Paul's side, posted this bond and they let Paul go because Paul was going to leave the town. Basically like your Western, like this town isn't big enough for the two of us, um, yeah, that kind of thing. A very sad story. You can imagine these Thessalonian Christians are very discouraged because not only were people who were said to be followers of God now going to make um, a, a prophet of God, which is the Apostle Paul, leave town. Now here they've got it, 
all of this dirty, dirty laundry, so to speak, is in front of uh, the uh, the people that they're trying to reach with the gospel, as if the what they're what's going on in their homes in their synagogue is just about uh, insurrection against the Caesar. But it's not about that at all. It's about Jesus, who is the Savior, who has come to suffer and die for our sins. You can imagine how frustrating that would be for uh, the Thessalonians that remained and therefore would need some encouragement from the Apostle Paul, encouraging them, hey, uh, grace and peace are yours. Now, in Bible class, we had an exercise, which I guess it will be your homework. Um, in, and that is to, oh, sorry, that's not quite there yet. Uh, the homework is to uh, go and skim through First Thessalonians and and try to rem- remember the main theme. When we went through First Thessalonians, main theme was encourage uh, them in faith, hope, in love, and in hope. And so your exercise was to go through First Thessalonians and see where where do you see that encouragement for faith, love, and hope. And then after you get done with that, then to go through the second book of Thessalonians, second, Thess- sec- second Thessalonians, and do the same thing. And some fill in the blanks there um, to just give you an idea, give you an idea what second Thessalonians is all about, where we're going. And so that would be my encouragement for you too. Maybe you did that already. As you looked over second Thessalonians, you kind of get an idea of the, of where the apostle Paul is going to go we're going to really, like I said, five lessons, three chapters. Take this slow as we go through Second Thessalonians for its encouragement um, uh, and its instruction. Now, uh, question here. We're still on this whole, like, writing a letter, getting ourselves into the, uh, into the feet of, into the sandals of the Thessalonian Christians, what it might have been like for them. What And here's one exercise to help us in that is, if former pastors of Emmanuel were to write our congregation a letter, what would they write? What teachings or doctrine do you think they would review or expand upon? So this is, how well do you know the former pastors at Emmanuel? And uh, what are some of the things you remember about some of the messages that they proclaimed or some of the things that they were really... Um, stressing as they were serving you as God's servants. The second aspect is to what encouragement or exhortations would they pass on to you? And uh, for me, that was really fascinating to think about the former places that I had served. Like what doctrines or teachings would I review if I would go back to, say, Redeemer, Lutheran, and Peer? And it's been six years. So the Apostle Paul has been you know, maybe six months, less than that. So it's really fresh. And so he can really write and say, these are some of the things that I remember that we were talking about. Or if somebody came to the Apostle Paul and said, hey, this congregation is going through this difficulty. What encouragement do you have for them? So I could really see there is a lot more of a uh, instantaneous type response for the Apostle Paul than for me, because it's been seven years. Like, the congregations that I served you know, seven years ago, I'm sure have gone through a lot more things than the last, than I would know about. Um, but regardless, I would think about, I mentioned this in Bible class. I said, when I was leaving Redeemer and Peer to come to Emmanuel and Shirley, Redeemer and Peer was struggling to raise funds to do a, a project to expand their fellowship hall. And uh, if I were like, let's say it was six months from the time that I left, what would I have What would I have written to them? And it would be a lot about that, the encouragement and giving, the encouragement uh, to see the the need for this fellowship hall for their their sake. If you didn't know, their fellowship hall was like one-third the size of their sanctuary space. So their sanctuary space, if you had people in church, if church was full, like say on Easter, you didn't have room to feed everybody for Easter breakfast. So Easter breakfast was really, we really had to be creative as to where people were going to eat and and to be honest, a lot of people just said, well, there's no, there's not enough room here, so I don't want to be a burden, so I'll just leave, which is not what we wanted. We wanted people to enjoy fellowship. So 
uh, if I was writing a letter to them six months from the time that I left, I probably would have said something like uh, encouragement in that, uh, the, the doctrine of stewardship, what does it mean to give, um, and, and, and also the encouragement of this is something that's important for them to be sacrificing for. Um, if I was leaving Terry and Circle and Wolf Point, Montana, I was writing them a letter, uh, what, would, what would I say? Um, I, within six months of leaving there, I'd probably be encouragement of uh, their new pastor coming. Well, their new pastor has now since he stayed there for longer than I did, and uh, now they have been without a pastor since then. And it really is uh, more like preaching stations now than, than a place that can support a pastor. So the encouragement might be a lot of what we're going to find in Second Thessalonians as well, uh, the encouragement to, to, for grace and peace, that you have unmerited favor from God and peace from him, um, that you, the Lord Jesus will be revealed at the end of all things. Maybe it seems like it's frustrating right now to, to be where you are. You don't have a pastor there full time. Um, the Lord Jesus is still your pastor, still watching over you and all of those uh, good comfort in that. And also the fact that I can't wait to see them again in heaven. So um, that would be something that I'd, I'd want to stress and encourage them in a letter. Now for you, what would you want your former pastor to say to you? Um, if you haven't put that in the comments, you can put that in the comments or you could just think about that for yourself. This is a good exercise for us because we're thinking about what, why did Paul write the, the words that he wrote? Uh, what is important for us to, to, to pick out of that um, and maybe to really see the pastoral heart of the Apostle Paul? Sometimes he doesn't get a, he doesn't get a, uh, a lot of credit for being the pastor that he was because we remember him from like the book of Romans or something where he's, he's speaking doctrine and all those things. It like, doesn't feel like... The, Maybe somebody might say, well, he doesn't feel like he's got a pastoral heart. We can really see his pastoral heart as we look at Second Thessalonians. Now, uh, going back. So if we're going to look at this in terms of uh, comfort and encouragement. Verses 1 and 2. Uh, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What comfort does Paul's description of the Thessalonian Christian church uh, bring to Christians who are suffering persecution? To the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My, what comfort might be in there? I know we talked about in Bible class the fact that he says God our Father, the Father who is watching over them is the same Father who is watching over the Apostle Paul as he is sitting there in um, in Corinth. Maybe the idea of authority. Uh, here they were brought before the uh, Roman authority. And who is really the, the authority of it all? God our Father. He is the one who is Father over all reminding them of where, no matter where they are in society, whether that society is, they perceive that society working against them, their father is still watching over them. Their heavenly father is still watching over them. And he is using the government. Yeah, yes, that government which caused problems in the church, that government which is pers might be actively persecuting the church, keeping Paul and Silas away from Thessalonica um, through their means that they had at their disposal, Yes, they are still God's instruments, that God can still use this um, tragedy, use this unfortunate circumstance for the good of his church, those whom he has gathered, and our Lord Jesus Christ. So here, remember, Acts 17, what did he spend three uh, Sabbath days talking about? How Jesus is the Christ, and how he is their Lord. Uh, he, is the, he is their God who saved them, he is the one who suffered and died and rose for them so that they would be in heaven forever. So these are um, some of the comforts that I get from that first verse of Second Thessalonians. Now the second verse, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the second verse probably, I mean, we um, would get a little bit like... I hear this every Sunday, so 
I mean, what's the significance of these verses, these words? But it's, it's good for us to think about those words again. Grace, sometimes referred to as that undeserved love of God. Uh, probably uh, Lutherans have looked at grace in terms of this is God's unmerited favor. Uh, if you are brought before a judge and you, um, you entered into that courtroom and the judge is scowling already and they're crabby and, and uh, you're going to yourself, I am not going to get justice here because this person already is, is out to get me. The Apostle Paul reminds us and the Thessalonians, they have grace. God's unmerited favor, God's disposition towards them is one of a positive one. Uh, God is now overflowing with gifts for them uh, because of Jesus and what he has done. Secondly, peace. Peace with from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You think of the turmoil that existed in that synagogue where um, people who the Sundays before the Apostle Paul arrived, they were seemingly on the same team. They were on the same side. They were all uh, worshiping the same God. And now, because Paul comes in and three Saturdays, he disrupts everything. And now we've got people in that synagogue that hate the Apostle Paul, that are actively working against the Apostle Paul, and those who think what the Apostle Paul had to say is true, that this Jesus who was born in Nazareth uh, born in Bethlehem, who was uh, preached in Nazareth and was around there in Capernaum, this Jesus who was crucified rose again. This is our Lord and Savior. He is the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. He is the promised Savior. Now you've got this church that's divided, and the Apostle Paul reminds him, peace. Peace is yours because of Jesus, um, and it's yours from God our Father. Your thoughts, questions on... 2 Thessalonians 1, 1 and 2, That's those are the only verses that we're covering today. Uh, we, like I said, if you were in class, um, we would have spent a lot more time having you dive into 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians just to give you a, a brief overview of where we're, of, of each book, if you get your feet wet so you, you're not coming at it cold every week. Summary. Like the Thessalonian Christians, we are united to our Heavenly Father and Jesus and enjoy the gifts of grace and peace. This truth gives us the confidence and strength we need to persevere in a world that does not care for Christians. That's my summary for today. Thank you very much. Uh, before we go, let's uh, join in a prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us grace and peace through your Son, Jesus. Help us see how these spiritual gifts are all we need to persevere until you call us home to heaven. In your Son's precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining me today on Second Thessalonians. Join me next week as we go uh, further into Second Thessalonians. It will be Thursday at 4.15.